So, you pay a few thousand bucks for a ticket, then fly on a private plane to a remote island with dinosaurs. A tour bus takes you through a graded field. You hope to see live diplodocus, velociraptors, tyrannosaurs, and other really big lizards. But it turns out that this park is full of a new species of genetically modified dinosaurs. Look, a massive tyrannosaurus with feathers and a beak is running around. This diplodocus has large ram horns, and the velociraptor has a short ostrich tail. All these monsters look like a big genetic mistake. They live in captivity and entertain rich people. And then you ask yourself, do we have the right to interfere with evolution and genetics to make dinosaurs for fun and profit? And is this the main question before making a real Jurassic Park? Why do we need to do this? But before answering it and seeing the consequences of such a park, let's find out how close modern technologies are to this. A company called Neuralink created a special chip and installed it into a monkey's brain to allow the animal to manipulate the computer with the power of its mind. One of the startup's co-founders said they had the technology to create Jurassic Park. Many people and fans of the famous movie were pleased with this news, but scientists say this idea isn't so cool. So if people are going to bring back dinosaurs, it can lead to unexpected results. This is not cloning or recreating lizards from a preserved DNA sample, but creating new species with the help of breeding and genetic code of dinosaurs' descendants. As a result, we can get lizards that have never walked on Earth before. We have whole tyrannosaur skeletons and fossils of other lizards, so what's the problem? Well, scientists can extract DNA from them and grow a dinosaur. But it's not so easy. People can recreate extinct animals or replenish the population of mammals on the verge of extinction thanks to fresh samples of soft tissues and DNA stored in laboratories. But the dinosaur specimens are several tens of millions of years old. There are some molecules of life that remain that archaeologists extracted worldwide. Still, they are all like pieces of a big puzzle. This genetic material is not enough to recreate the entire dinosaur code. Genetic material begins to go bad as soon as life ceases. And now, imagine how many different upheavals and weather conditions one dino skeleton could survive for millions of years. At first, it could burn because of a fire. It could get underwater, and after that, fall to the ground where it spent an eternity before archaeologists found it. Almost nothing remains of the genetic code. However, one company called Colossal decided to try to recreate the ancient animals using the DNA found. Only instead of dinosaurs, they wanted to bring back a woolly mammoth. According to the authors of this project, mammoths can be helpful to the planet. They can fertilize the soil with their manure, filling it with valuable elements, ensuring good growth of meadows and other things like that. To implement such an ambitious project, scientists use mammoth bodies well-preserved in the cold tundra. But it turned out that there was not a single living cell in them. Scientists couldn't clone a mammoth based on preserved DNA. But the company had a plan B. They decided to find the missing pieces of the DNA puzzle in the woolly mammoth's closest relative, which is the Asian elephant. Using full-fledged living cells with DNA parts of mammoths, scientists hope to edit the genome and create a new, perfect animal. They plan to remove one detail from the DNA of an Asian elephant and insert a mammoth cell there. The new mammoth may have a thick coat, hard skin, a thick layer of subcutaneous fat, and other functions necessary for survival in the cold. And what if we do the same with dinosaurs? If the pieces of the puzzle can't be preserved in dinosaur fossils, then you can find them in the DNA of other animals, the modern descendants of the formidable lizards. For example, a modern chicken and an ostrich may be direct relatives of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Look at the running chicken and a computer model of a moving dinosaur. You could say it's poultry in motion. They're similar in some ways. In addition, the structure of the skeleton of birds is similar to the skeleton of a T-Rex. But crossing the genes of a dinosaur and a chicken is quite a perplexing task with an unpredictable result. Scientists needed to rewrite the gene to endow the chicken with some reptilian properties. As a result, 
they recreated the dinosaur-like teeth and hands of a velociraptor. In this way, scientists can get chickenosaurus. But how many variations can appear from a test tube during such work? Mini T-Rex with a chicken beak. Or imagine a feathered velociraptor. Or an ordinary chicken with a toothy beak and scales instead of feathers. What if a chicken's body demands meat, but its brain stays vegetarian? According to scientists, such operations may require about 500 animals. What to do with them after the experiments? What if many of them are born suffering? And all for what? So that people can come to the zoo and look at mutant chickens? This is a gross intrusion into the natural process of evolution. If we create a new species, how will it affect the rest? What if mutant dinosaurs break free and increase their population, destroying the local fauna? Many scientists want to know more about dinosaurs without creating them. We think we know everything about these lizards, thanks to the movies and documentaries. But there are many mysteries around them. How could they support their heavy bodies? How did their lungs work in the distant past when there was twice as much carbon dioxide in the air? Is it true that dinosaurs produced enzymes to get more nutrients from plants? Researchers claim that it's unnecessary to interfere with evolution and conduct genetic experiments to answer these questions. But let's imagine that in the distant future, scientists manage to create dinosaurs from the genome of birds and other animals. And these dinosaurs look pretty normal without any mutations. How will the planet change? Well, firstly, there would be many theme parks and zoos with live dinosaurs. Initially, only the rich would be the main visitors to these places. But over time, the prices would drop and allow ordinary people to visit dino parks. Many would want to have pet lizards. You probably saw how a tiger or another wild cat lived in the house on TV or the internet. So imagine that people will keep small jumping lizards, like these guys, in their apartments. Dinosaurs would live on huge farms or reserves. There would be vast ranches with a herd of Triceratops or Stegosaurus. People would train many lizards and make them helpers in agriculture. Instead of a pack of oxen, you could see Diplodocus plowing it away somewhere in the fields. Also, there would be dinosaur races. People would make billions on dinosaurs. But eventually, all this would lead to disaster. Some dinosaurs would have started living in the wild, increasing their offspring and taking out other animal species from the fauna. This would lead to an ecological catastrophe. What if ichthyosaurs or plesiosaurs got into the ocean and increased their population? They would quickly destroy other marine life. People wouldn't be able to sail on ships, as one sea lizard can easily turn over a small vessel or bite it in two. People would have to face great danger. In this case, the billions earned from the dinosaurs would be spent on fighting them. And it would be quite difficult, since dinosaurs have thick, rough skin, strong jaws, and muscles. And what if people accidentally created an intelligent species? Imagine that a T-Rex would appear who would decide to start a revolution against humanity. In this case, we could lose first place in the food chain. And then people would realize that Jurassic Park was a bad idea.